So COVID-19 has been extremely devastating on the globe. Not only are we facing thousands of deaths because most of the globe have to stay in lockdown, it's prevented a lot of people from putting food on their table. So there are governments and there are people out there that are helping subsidize families and businesses to create money even though they can't get to work or do work. And it's easier to say just work from home, but a lot of businesses, especially in the entertainment industry, and in teaching, they often have to be there with their students or with their audience or on set or taking photographs for a wedding. And there's a lot of problems that come with this. I think those of you who are involved in any form of eventing, whether it be event organization or the creative side of it, are really struggling uh, when it comes to just making ends meet right now. So I'm gonna propose something that I think a lot of people should be doing anyway, and that's live streaming. Over the past couple of weeks, I've seen a upsurge in viewers on Twitch because people are at home and they want to watch something and you have the capacity to entertain them. Also, Steam has seen the highest concurrent users I think that they've ever seen because people are at home playing video games. And although live streaming is traditionally a video game space, I think that other industries can really benefit from live streaming. So let me run through a couple of ideas with you and uh, a couple of ways on how to live stream so that I can introduce you to the medium and that hopefully at the end of this video, you can start producing your own live streams and hopefully making up some of your income by doing that. In the past, I've lectured modules on how to live stream to photographic schools where in the class, a lot of the students are either going to be uh, aspiring photographers or GoPro users or wedding photographers or fashion photographers or they want to make short films. But I teach a module on how to live stream because I honestly believe, and so do a lot of the schools, that supplementing your traditional medium with live streaming is going to help you out. Offering that service is extremely valuable to people that need live streaming for whatever service they're doing. People that might not think that they need live streaming but could really benefit from it. And live streaming is a lot simpler than it first appears. I mean, if I can do it in this room, you guys can pretty much do it anyway. To give you an idea, when the penny like dropped for me uh, was an instance where my cousin got married in the UK when I was in the UK and a lot, of, a lot of my family are based here in South Africa and they couldn't make it over to that particular wedding. So I ended up spending the wedding live streaming it for the rest of my family at home. I gave them an unlisted YouTube link. So only people who had the link could watch it and everybody had a braai. It's a barbecue here. They watched the live stream of the wedding the whole time. And I just kind of did it like a constant stream of everything that was happening. Got people to come interact with the you know family members to interact with other family members back at home, which was something that I thought was pretty unique. And that if you're a wedding photographer, that could have been a really cool value add to your service. Cause a lot of people can't make it out to weddings. It's just too expensive and so on. Even now, a lot of weddings that I know have been canceled, postponed, and people that are still keeping their weddings have stopped guests from coming. So why not offer the potential service of, if you take, if you're a photographer, to broadcast that wedding to the rest of the family, maybe do it remotely, and people can still participate in your service, but obviously from the comfort of their own home without leaving quarantine or self-isolation. Just a couple of ideas here. If you are running a huge comedy show, why not try translate that into a comedy show live stream or repurpose it and package it as a, a, a potential TV show in whatever region that you're in. Or, or just even an online show for people that have bought tickets, maybe give them a bit of a discount and say, hey, we're gonna still have the show, but the comedians are gonna be doing it from the comfort of their own homes. And we're gonna be, or we're gonna be broadcasting it from a venue and you can watch it at home live. Teaching is a great example. There's so many ways that you can use live streaming to teach your students in a classroom like setting with just basic tools that uh, that you got from Elgato. So just out of complete transparency, I'm sponsored by Elgato. You'll see a couple of the logos in the top right hand corner of this video. I can never point to the right one. And their products are generally plug and play. So I'm going to go through a couple of them that are available here in South Africa for you to get. I think that they're worth looking at. Obviously, you don't need an Elgato product. Some of them you can hack yourself. But for those of you who are entering live streaming as a business, or if you want to extend your business and live streaming, it's rather inexpensive to just get the plug and play solutions and make sure that it just works for whoever's watching, whoever your audience is on the other side, whoever you're broadcasting to with just these products. So let me run through how live streaming works. The first thing you need to do with live streaming is choose a platform. So I live stream predominantly on Twitch, which is a gaming platform. But then again, there are musicians out there that are you know, playing music. They are basically busking, essentially. You can uh, have a donation bid to 
play a cover of a song or you can teach people music while you are performing it if it's guitar or piano or write songs i've seen a lot of people write songs i've seen freestyle rappers freestyling it's a very vibrant community that where people are trying different things and people will constantly donate and keep their audience interested in what they're producing um, I've seen artists, uh, Bob Ross, <laughs> on, on Twitch, illustrators, and you can commission artwork, like you can have something in the corner that says, for $400, I will draw a, a portrait of your dog. And people will do that in your live stream. So if you are an artist, that is a great way to potentially make some money and get noticed. Another platform would be YouTube. YouTube is probably the most um, robust network to stream to here in South Africa. It's very easy to stream to it. And you don't need to reroute your signal. We are at the bottom of Africa. So to get it out to YouTube, the quality is really good. And also a lot of people already understand what YouTube is. Not many people understand what Twitch is. A lot of gamers do, but many people understand what YouTube is. So maybe YouTube is a good option. You can even live stream on Instagram or on Twitter but those two are very easy it's very easy to make money number two if you want to make money out of what you're doing on those platforms you need to choose a service like stream elements or Streamlabs. they are platforms where you overlay graphics they look basic overlay graphic overlay packages where you can when somebody donates to you or or, or submits bits or it's like in like currency in in whatever platform medium that you have or follows you a, a notification pops up on stream and the audience is rewarded for that interaction where which makes it way more exciting than television because people can literally live interact with you in a way that you can't really do on tra traditional terrestrial tv so make sure that you choose either stream elements or stream lab i'm going to include all those links in the description make sure that you check them out choose one that makes you feel the most comfortable and if you're not you know if you don't want any overlay or that's a little bit too daunting for you, you can skip the step as well. Before we get to gear, you need to first conceptualize what you're going to be doing. There's something that we learned at Varsity called uh, concept before execution. So essentially what that means is we've got to have a really good idea before we know how to make it. A lot of people go like, I know how to paint, so I'm going to work out what to paint. That's not really a great way to be creative or make money. You know, you've got to come up with the idea first, go wild with it, like just spit out, write it down on a piece of paper, work out what it's going to be. And then once you have a dream of what you're going to execute, then look at how you're going to execute it. Because then it will kind of temper your dream a little bit. You'll you'll still do really well, still be a higher, high standard, but you also have the appropriate tools to achieve that task. Number three, you've got to choose the gear that goes with your setup. So I've recommended Elgato. Elgato is a brand that sponsors my, my channel. I'm a huge fan of theirs. I've always been, when I first heard about them, I thought it was Elgato with an L and I spent about six months to a year because I heard it on a podcast, typing out Elgato because Americans pronounce things strangely. Eventually when I found out how to pronounce, how to spell it and, and, and everything, I ordered my first products while I was overseas. They took forever, but now they're actually available in South Africa right now, which is incredible. And they've been available for about a year. It blows my mind. I used to like literally get a ship to a friend's house. I used to go stay over there overseas when I was at an event and then ship it back in my bag. You don't need to do that anymore. So there are a couple of products that are, that are kind of like the bare essentials. The first one is actually lighting. They've got the Elgato Key Light and the Elgato Key Light Air. Those two products are kind of like soft boxes that fit into small spaces. The Key Light Air is actually on a stand on its own. So it's kind of like, looks like a big fancy lamp, but it's controlled via your phone with Wi-Fi and you can choose the temperature, which is either it's cold or warm and the light on your face so that you look good in a video. The, the key lights, the high-end ones are panels that can either be gripped to your desk or put onto a stand. I like the clamp, the clamps to your desk, especially in my setup as a, as a gaming streamer, I have stuff on a desk all the time, but you might be cooking. So I like the key light air for situations like that where you can tilt. It's got like a gooseneck um, underneath the light and you can tilt it down, which is great so that you can, you know, light your products properly. They also have another product called uh, the Cam Link. The Cam Link allows you to put most cameras into your computer as a webcam. So if you are an existing photographer, say you're a wedding photographer and you've got your gear already, you don't necessarily need to buy a webcam or another camera to use your live stream. You can use your high-end professional grade kit, okay? So it's very cool 
To make sure that that's compatible, you need to go to a compatibility list. It's using the HDMI out on the camera and it needs a clean feed to do that, which means that there's no stuff on the, on the UI. You know, when you look at the LCD panel at the back and you plug it in to the camera, what comes out on the TV is often exactly what's on that LCD panel. You don't want any of that stuff. You want a clean image. None of that in the way of your face or whatever you, you're trying to live stream. Make sure that you double check the compatibility of, uh, of that. There are lists online. I'm gonna put a, a link in the description. All the stuff is gonna be in the description. That, that'll help you out. If you can't afford a, a cam link or you don't have a high-end camera, if you've got any form of webcam, that should be fine. But remember, webcam sensors are extremely small. I'm shooting on, on a DSLR here, so it looks beautiful and I've got like really nice lighting here. But if, if I was filming on a webcam, because the sensor size is so small, it lets in a lot less light. So you're gonna to need to over light your, your subject matter. That's why I recommend getting a key light first. I know it sounds crazy, but everybody goes like, why would you need the lights first? I go like, get the lights first because that will determine how good the image quality is of the subject matter that you're filming. Use what you've got. It is the most important part. There's a lot of kit that you could be buying. This is like buying a car. You can buy a car that gets you from A to B, and then you can buy like a Lamborghini. They're not equal, but they can still get the job done. Thirdly, and I, I kind of consider this a sort of necessity. It's not really, but for me it is. But I've got to have a range of products called the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck is a live vision mixer that sits on your desk where you can cut to different scenes or uh, trigger different effects with it while you are streaming. It's very nice to have and it's a very basic version of what a lot of people have in television studios but achieves a very similar job. You know when you see like something transitioning or cuts to a new scene or the cameras are, are switching around. That's exactly what the Stream Deck does. And there are a couple of versions of them. You get the Stream Deck Mini, you get the Stream Deck and then Stream Deck XL. Those are the hardware components. But if you don't want to buy that and you're still brand new to this, I highly recommend getting Stream Deck on your phone. There's an iOS and Android app at the moment. Yes. And I think it's like $3 a month. I think you get like a free week trial to check it out for yourself. And then you can really just like mess around and find out how this, how the live streaming works. If you really like it, then you can go get it. I've got a Stream Deck XL, I've got a Stream Deck Mini, and I've got a normal Stream Deck. My normal Stream Deck is like a 15 button panel I bought in the UK, smuggled it down here. I need to find that I'll got it was in South Africa. Just my luck. <laughs> if you are streaming video games, another necessity would be um, an HD60. So I've got to have these game capture devices. They plug an HDMI out of anything whether it's a Xbox, a PlayStation, a Nintendo Switch, um, a uh, another laptop, an Apple TV, anything that's got an HDMI out, it can't ingest that feed. And then it's got an HDMI out of its own that goes into the screen. And with USB, it records the gameplay. So if you guys are streaming gameplay or anything that requires a second device, you might, you might want to get an HD60. But again, this video isn't really for gamers specifically. If you are a gamer at home, this is a way to potentially make some extra money out of your hobby um, or just enjoy this as a hobby. Street live streaming can be a hobby, hobby of its own. For those of you guys who don't know what gear we use, that's exactly what it is. And then there's also an Elgato green screen, which is this really nice slidey up green screen. I've got it behind me where you can just pull it up from the ground and it stands and you can pull it down and then slide it under a bed. Boom got all your space back and you get a chroma key that's just it's very clean you need a clean chroma key because if you want to green screen yourself out which is really nice there are other ways to stream you can stream live with your phone you can stream directly from a lot of modern day consoles there are a lot of limitations like you can't really put your own overlays over them remember knowing what you're going to be filming is super important when it comes to selecting the gear so go through a bunch of the gear, find out what you want to do and what you want to achieve. And there are tools out there that can get you to do it. And I highly recommend live streaming as an option for you. I didn't even mention it earlier, but like Facebook is a great way. You might have a company that's on Facebook and you might want to talk directly to your audience and you can using a lot of these products and put together really exciting shows or ways to engage with your, with your customers or with your uh, people that are interested in what you're doing. This is this is something that not a lot of people think about outside of streaming as a culture, but I think it's something that could really elevate your business, especially if you can only do work from home. So now that we got our brain juices working and thinking, let me know below what you are gonna be doing and using you know your live streams for when it comes to your client. I actually wanna know. This is part of the most exciting mediums for me when it comes to just entertainment in general. It's just this way that I can interact with my audience live on the fly in a way that in the past wasn't really done before. We had broadcast TV, but now we can broadcast 
from my own apartments. Let me know what any executions that you guys are, are thinking about back at home. And if you guys are, we all are, I suppose, as a globe, suffering from COVID and Corona, uh, I just want to, all my well wishes to you guys. Um, stay indoors, uh, look after yourselves, don't spread the virus. Yeah, don't, don't think that it's a government hoax or something, please. We need to do this together as a, as a globe, actually. It's one of the times we have to come together. So, you know, our grandparents can survive. The, 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 the death toll is way too high. One is way too high. The current one is crazy and I don't know where it's going. And I, yeah, stay indoors, make content indoors, come up with solutions. We can do this um, as a society. I'll see you guys in another video. Cheers.